We've been doing studies for now about 25 years. Our main discovery is that there is a switch that animals use to go from being normal weight to overweight. That switch, you can activate it by certain types of foods. And it's a specific pathway. We've actually identified the very steps in that pathway. And the incredible thing, the more we study this, uh, the more it appears that this is a pathway that's driving not just obesity and diabetes, but that it's involved in a variety of diseases, including dementia, cancer, uh, behavioral disorders, you know, high blood pressure and kidney disease and liver disease. If you take a laboratory rat or if you take an animal in the wild and you catch it and you, let's say you force feed it, you make it gain weight and then you take you quit the force feeding and the animal will come right back to its weight and not only that it'll come back to the weight it's supposed to be at that time of the year and it will go right back to the weight it thinks it should be at we figured out that it's there's an, a food that triggers this so normally weight is regulated by a hormone called leptin there are other regulatory hormones too but this one is a big one it turns out that the the main way a major way that it's done is by eating fructose, which is a sugar that's in fruit and honey. And when animals start eating fructose, it activates this metabolic pathway. You have to eat a lot of it. It's not like uh, you and I eating an apple, okay? Uh, I mean, it's really like you have to eat a large amount of fructose. And when you do, it triggers this switch that makes you hungry. It makes you thirsty. It affects the brain centers. You can show where it affects it. And, and it will want you to do foraging behavior where you go out and seek and try to find food. But while you're foraging, your activity continues to be good. Your metabolism's good. But when you stop foraging, the, your resting energy metabolism actually goes to a lower level. You know, how many calories you're spending in a day? You'll spend calories foraging, but when you're resting, you'll actually spend less calories. You, you stay more quiet than a normal animal. So this switch uh, is activated by fructose. And, um, and the way it works is it drops the energy in the cell. I, mean, I know that sounds funny because all calories create energy, but there's, you have to think of, when I say drop the energy in the cell, I mean the active usable energy. So when you eat calories, basically it can go into stored energy, which is fat for the most part. And uh, it can go into active energy, which we call ATP. And the ATP is what you and I use to talk, to think, to walk. ATP is your immediate usable energy. And so what it does is the ATP normally comes from the energy factors in the cell. We, we call them mitochondria. And, they, and, and really this is, totally it. If you're into health, you want healthy mitochondria. Mitochondrial health, they make the energy and obesity is an energy disorder, you know, and diabetes is an energy disorder. So these little mitochondria are pouring out the ATP. But there's an ancient system too called glycolysis, which can make ATP. And, uh, and so that there's another system which is rarely kicks in. So mainly it's these energy factors. And what the switch does is it depresses the mitochondria. It does it by causing like oxidative stress to those mitochondria. And so the amount of ATP gets, there's less ATP being made. And so the calories are shunted to stored fat instead of instant fat. It just shunts it. It shunts it from instant energy to stored energy. And the stored energy is the fat. A lot of the oxygen we breathe goes to make the ATP. And what happens is some of the enzymes in these cycles, the things that kind of move the stuff around and break it down to the next step and so that it can make ATP, they're sensitive to oxidative stress. So that if there's oxidative stress goes up, those enzymes get inhibited. And so that, that pathway to make ATP is, is slowed down or reduced or can, it's not fully stopped, but it's like slowed down. And so when that happens, the mitochondria make less ATP, so it turns out that there's more uh, shunting. Some of the metabolites actually go and, and stimulate fat production and also to block the uh, burning effect. So there's, it stimulates both the synthesis of fat and it blocks the breaking down of fat. 
And so that it's like a double whammy. And so what happens is the calories end up getting stored as fat and the amount of energy produced is less. And then what happens is the low energy makes you hungry. So then you eat more. And so it stores more fat because it's the shunt still going on. But eventually the ATP levels start coming up because you're eating more and more. So it's a brilliant system. And, and when we first discovered this pathway, uh, and realized it was orchestrating the whole series of events. Then we realized that there was another side to it, which is that, that the body can make fructose. So when we found that animals who were eating fructose started to eat more and they got really fat and they got diabetic and they got fatty liver and they got their triglycerides went up to their blood and, and they, be, you know, they develop a uh, low grade kidney disease. I mean, it was like, this is coming from sugar, you know? I mean, oh my God. I, you know, lust they call sugar poison. Well, is that because they're eating too much? Because it's stimulating hunger. But what if we made it so that all the animals ate the same amount of food? So even though you're hungry, I'm not gonna give you the food you want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed all the animals the same amount. And then we had a control group and a high sugar or fructose group. And I should say that sugar has fructose in it. So table sugar, high fructose corn syrup, um, these are the main sources of fructose for us. So when we did that and we took those animals and we gave them exactly the same. So it turned out, remember how I told you that it makes you hungry and eat more, but it also drops your resting energy me metabolism. So because it drops your energy metabolism, if you're eating the same number of calories, there will be some weight gain in the sugar group. Also, we did a trick where we gave them less calories than they normally eat. So mm -hmm. they were like on a diet, but one's on a high sugar diet, one's on a control in it diet. And when we put them on the high sugar diet, those animals became diabetic. They became, they got fatty liver. The other group lost weight. Yes, calories are important, but also there's something special about fructose where even if you're on a caloric restriction, it's gonna make you diabetic. We knew that the body can make fructose. This was known for 50 years. There's only one way it can be made and it's called, uh, it's the polyol pathway. Normally it's pretty quiet. It's not present. So when you're young, it's not really around. This whole pathway is turned on in situations of stress. So if you're not stressed, you know, so if the baby is being breastfed and everything's going fine, uh, it's going to have very low levels, mm -hmm. but you can turn it on. It can even go up locally with stress. The answer is we can just cut out fructose in the diet. But then I realized that, you know, carbs could do it, but did not contain fructose. Uh, when you eat a high glycemic carb, you could theoretically start making fructose in your body. And the reason that is, is that one, one of the classic means for stimulating fructose turns out to be from a high glucose level in the blood. So since high glucose can stimulate uh, fructose production, we realize that, you know, every time you eat bread or rice or potatoes, the glucose in your blood goes up a bit and, you know, it stimulates insulin. Yeah, but it might stimulate fructose. And it also turns out that dehydration is the biggest stimulus for fructose production. Walk people through really quickly then what they should be doing. So the first thing is know your foods that, that can activate the switch and know the foods that don't. Vegetables, of course, are good. White meat, a lot of fish are good. Red meats, you have to be a little bit careful for. But basically the most important rule is liquid sugar is really dangerous. Fruit juice, I love fruit juice, but unfortunately it will activate the switch for sure. And so I'd be very careful with the fruit juices. Um, there may be some fruit juices that are safer, like fruits that are really relatively low in fructose, like kiwi and stuff. There's mm -hmm. berries. Uh, some of them don't have much sugar in it. A third thing would be obviously desserts and candy and sugar uh, cakes. You have to be very careful with high glycemic carbs. I, I think there's four big ones, right? Bread, rice, potatoes, cereal, you know, chips. I recommend trying to avoid those if possible. And then, you know, drink a lot of water. I mean, one of the incredible things is uh, most people who are overweight are dehydrated. 
and they're dehydrated not only from the salt, but it turns out fructose dehydrates you too. And I didn't go into that. But if you give a person a soft drink, that is not hydrating. Okay. That is dehydrating. But mm. for most of us, we're not drinking enough water and we should be drinking eight to 10 glasses of water a day. And that's probably one of the best messages when you reduce your salt intake. And you know, things like intermittent fasting, it's fantastic. That's a wonderful system and low carb diets, wonderful for trying to lose weight. And then exercising is, is turns out to be a great way not to lose weight because it doesn't burn many calories, but it stimulates the mitochondria. You won't notice the benefit, except the benefit's going to be happening because as the mitochondria go up, your risk for relapse and gaining weight goes down.